everyone, my name is Chloe, and today I am here to do my August wrap-up. So, I have just kind of felt slumpy lately, and I don't know why. I don't know if it's just like the change in weather, because we've had some rain, some, I don't know. Um, my husband was gone for like eight days, and so I was single parenting, and that kind of fried my brain. So, I don't know if that was part of it, or if I just have been reading a string of things that aren't great. I don't know. For some reason, I'm just not in the mood to read. But that being said, I did still manage to finish 23 books and one DNF. So the star ratings are as follows. I had obviously one DNF, um, two two stars, one two and a half star, uh, seven three stars, six three and a half stars, um, five four stars, and two five stars. So Two five stars is amazing, but all those two, two and a half threes, I think is kind of what bogged me down. So the average was 3.4, and for me, like, a three is okay. A three and a half is, like, better than okay. I would recommend it. Threes are wishy-washy. If I keep them, sometimes, sometimes not. If I would recommend them, sometimes, sometimes not. So the fact that it was below that three and a half mark is kind of a kind of like reflective of how I feel, but two five stars is amazing. So um, as always, I am going to go through the books in the order that I read them. And I will I vlogged the entire month, so I will link the vlogs down below in order. So if you want to hear any more of my thoughts, you can go to that vlog. I in my vlog thumbnails, I always put the pictures of what books I read that week or that event, whatever it may be. So if you are interested in hearing more detailed thoughts, um, go to the vlogs, and here I'll keep it pretty basic. So let's just start with the first one was Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. I am not a sci-fi reader at all, but I have heard so much good stuff about this one that I decided to try it, and I ended up giving it four stars. I really enjoyed it. It's about a man who um, gets kidnapped one night and finds like these kind of alternate realities, um, like what would have happened if his life would have gone a different way, and it really makes you think about all of the what-ifs and all of the little and big decisions that you make and what the tra trajectory of of your life would be if you made a different decision. So I really liked it. Um, there were some parts that I couldn't quite wrap my mind around, but overall very much enjoyed it. Four stars. Next was Jenny Lopez has a bad week. I think this is either two and a half or three and a half in the Lindsay Kelk I Heart series. And so I'm reading through that series. And so this one was an addition. I have not liked Jenny Lopez, her best friend, from the very beginning. So I don't know why I even bothered. I gave it two stars. I think it didn't add anything to the story. I don't know. It just, I'm like annoyed that I read it. I did not like it. Next is The Shadow Wife by Diane Chamberlain. I love her and I gave it four stars. This is about a man and woman who both are social workers in a hospital and uh, the woman set the man up with his wife. Well, his wife had an aneurysm while she was giving birth to their son and so now she is in this kind of... Um, like not vegetative state, but she is hospitalized for the rest of her life and her ability to communicate is gone and um, she's almost like in a vegetative state. So it's their story. Um, so many good things about friendship, romance. Yes, great. Diane Chamberlain can almost do no wrong. Um, next is The Roommate Problem by Maria Ankenman, Ankenman, um, and I gave that three and a half stars. That was one that I reviewed from NetGalley, and this one is about a ma a guy and girl who um, I think he shows up to her apartment like because to move in or vice versa. I can't remember, and they expect that it's the same gender, but they are opposite genders, so it's their relationship um, working through being roommates. Then The Switch by Beth O'Leary. I got this as a NetGalley um, audio arc, and I was so excited to read it. I have not read any Beth O'Leary, but the concept sounds really good. This is about a woman and her grandmother. Um, grandma lives in the country. Woman lives in the city. They have things going on, so they decide to switch places, and it's their story. And I did love the grandma. I thought she was doing a lot of like online dating and things like that, and that was really funny to read about. Um, but I just could not get into this book. I gave it two stars. I slogged through it, just could not connect. And I don't know if it's the writing style or really what it was. Um, they also switched lives like so completely. They switched cell phones and like 
it just had, I was like, this is too much. I just couldn't get into it. And I know I'm the minority. I have yet to find anybody who doesn't like it. So if you are somebody that didn't like it, let me know just so I don't feel like such a bum. <laughs> um, next is Not Like the Movies by Carrie Winfrey. After reading The Switch and being so bummed out by it, I was like, I've got to read Not Like the Movies because I know I'll like that. So I buddy read it with my friend Bree from, um, I'm, I just tried to combine her name. It's Bree Hill from Falling for Romance. I will link her um, down below. And this is the second in the Waiting for Tom Hanks series by Carrie Winfrey. And I love the first one. And the second was no exception. Five stars for me. It was about Chloe and Nick. Nick is a coffee store own, owner that she works in. And they um, he's kind of impining for her. And they have a bantery relationship. And so it's their relationship. But there's so much more going on. She is caring for her, like her, her dad who is sick. And I think he maybe has um, Alzheimer's. I can't. I can't remember for sure. But um, just the whole conversation about caring for a loved one and how how much of a priority and how much that overtakes your life is so good. And it was just so good. Very highly recommend that one. Next was Unleashed, which is number 50 in the Long Tall Texan series by Diana Palmer. And I gave it two and a half stars. Um, this one I received for free from Harlequin. I filled out one of the um, inserts in a mass market paperback, and this is one that they sent me. So I wanted to read it, and I just didn't care for it. It's about a guy, um, his name's Coulter, Coulter Banks or something like that, and he solves, uns like, he goes and solves crime, uh, cold cases, and so then this girl comes to work for him, and she is so dirt poor that she can't even make a cup of coffee, and it's just, I just did not like it, um, and other people have warned me that it's kind of an alpha male situation, and it is, but that's not what bothered me, it was more just, um, I don't know, the romance I couldn't get into, the story I couldn't get into, two and a half stars. Um, next was This Time for Keeps by Rochelle Allers, and this one is number seven in the Wickham Falls Weddings series, and I have not read any of that, and I think that did this book a disservice. I gave it three stars. Um, it's a second chance romance about a girl who goes back to her hometown and runs into this guy, and um, she's taking care of her niece and nephew, I think. I think it's a boy and girl. I can't remember, but um, so they, it's their relationship and something big happened to them in high school and we don't know, like, and that is like not even as much a part of it as I thought. And really, I think this book I would have enjoyed a lot more if I had read the rest of the series because I just wasn't really invested in the relationship. But if I had known more of the town and the people and had seen them throughout the other seven books, I think I definitely would have liked it more. The writing style was great. Um, I think it was just, this was more of a me problem from reading it out of order. Um, next was I Heart Vegas by Lindsay Kelk, and this is number four in the I Heart series, and this series for me is just kind of a three-star series. Um, this was another one. She goes to Vegas. Uh, different things ensue. Um, Jenny Lopez is a crazy lady, and it was just, it was all right. It was cute, entertaining, but just three stars. Next was An Alaskan Christmas and Under an Alaskan Sky by Jennifer Snow. Um, I got Under an Alaskan Sky as the other book in that Harlequin um, haul. And so I wanted to read the first one, which is An Alaskan Christmas um, first, obviously. And that one is about a girl who, she's like an ER doctor or something. And she is a workaholic, whatever. Her job says, you've got to you've got to take a break. So she does, goes to this, um, she's in Alaska already, but she goes to a smaller town in Alaska and it's her story there, um, her romance there, and then the next one is about her friend. So they were both three stars for me. Um, they were overly explicit in sex for me. Like the whole second half just kind of seemed like like it, that's all it was. And so um, me, I don't particularly care for that. But if you do, I think you might like it more. Next is The Dating Itinerary by Brooke Williams, and this one I gave four stars. I thought it was really cute. It's about um, a guy and girl. They, like, I guess he ha had beat her out of um, a job, and then he, she ended up getting it once he decided to, like, freelance, but he was chosen first, and so there's a lot of bitterness between the two of them. Well, really, between her and him, um, he's, he's not really bitter, but... They both are, so they're both journalists, and they're both doing a project about, like, ways to meet people and date. And so 
Um, she is having to do this dating itinerary. So she has to try all these different methods of dating and he's basically following her around. So they do speed dating, dark dating, um, meeting at a bar, I think. Um, like they do all sorts of different things. And I thought it was really cute and funny. I gave it four stars. That, that one is also really short. Um, I think it was like 200 pages. I can't quite remember, but I, it was very short. Next is Feels Like Falling um, by Christy Woodson Harvey. I, that name always trips me up, but I gave this on three stars. Uh, I love the writing style. It's about two women. One is like a high society lady, but her husband leaves her. So she's like the talk of the town. And then the other is, um, a woman who's had some hard times. She grew up in a hard position. She's not wealthy by any means. Um, and she loses her job because of the other woman. So the other woman is like, hey, will you come um, work for me? Like, help me. Her husband has left and taken her kid to Europe or something on a vacation. So she's by herself. She's lonely. This other woman comes in and helps her. And um, they strike up a friendship. And I love the writing style. I love that women's fiction. And overall, I wanted to love this one. But there was just a lot of really, really problematic things for me in it. And I did not love it. So ended up giving it three stars. I was really torn. Like, there were just so many things that made me say yuck. And so that's that. It also has an accidental baby in it. And I hate those. Um, a, an infertile lady got pregnant off one time. So... Love it when that happens. Um, next was Between the Lies by Michelle Adams. I gave this one three stars. The first half of this, this is a thriller, and the first half was so intriguing. Like, I had to know what was going on. It's about this woman. She wakes up in her parents' house and has no idea, like, anything. She doesn't know who she is, what's happened to her, why she's there. She doesn't know anything. And so as the book goes on, we figure stuff out, and it just kind of fell flat towards the end for me. So I ended up giving it three stars. Um, it was interesting, but nothing great. Next was The Rose Garden by Susanna Kearsley. And I really wanted to love this one because I know so many people do. And I'm not a fan of historical fiction, but I thought maybe the time travel thing would help. And it definitely did. And I think it was a very interesting concept. And like the story was interesting, but the writing style was very descriptive. Well, more descriptive than I like and I just felt like it was really like kind of long and just hard for me I I just really get out of the story when it's descriptive like overly descriptive in my opinion and so this one is about a woman who um goes back to her hometown or like her childhood house in Cornwall to spread her sister's ashes and while she's there she discovers like a closet or something where she can time travel back to the 1700s so when she's in the 1700s of course she meets a guy and it's their romance and all of that so um the story in general is great because you get to see a lot of the heartbreaking stuff that happens in the 1700s and um there were just a lot of things that like weren't explained enough in, in regards to the time travel thing. And um, then the descriptive writing just kind of took me out. So I gave it three stars. Next, I read the first four in the Wedding Date series by Jasmine Guillory. So Wedding Date, Proposal, Wedding Party, and um, Royal Holiday. Those four. So I really liked them all. The first one was my favorite. I gave it four stars. And the rest, I think three and a half. Yep. And um, the first three kind of follow a formula of guy, girl, neither one a relationship, but they have this chemistry that they can't deny. And so then of course it ends in a relationship and everybody's happy. In the first one, um, they meet in a hotel elevator that it gets stuck. And so that's how they meet in the second one. Um, she is proposed to by somebody else at a baseball game and she says no. And so then everybody in the crowd is like hating on her. So this guy and his sister rescue her. And then the third one is um, friends of people from the first one because they are in the wedding party. And then the fourth one is the mother of one of the characters. And they go to um, somewhere in the UK. I don't think it's London, but maybe it is. And um, so they go to the UK and it's her mother's love story. So I really enjoyed them. Uh, I have the fifth one finally. It just came in on hold today. And so I will read the fifth one soon. But overall, I think that series is really cute. Next is my DNF, which was Second Glance by Jodi Pico, and I love Jodi Pico. I really, I have tons of her on my red shelf, a couple still to, left to read. I think just one actually left to read, but anyway, so I read that one. 
and I read like a quarter of it. It was like a 17 hour audiobook and I was listening to it on audio and normally like if I'm not loving a book, I can get it on audio and enjoy it. But not this one. I just couldn't. It was overly complicated. There were so many characters, so many storylines. I just, I couldn't do it. And so I went and read reviews of, um, like, spoilery reviews. And it, it seems like kind of a consensus that it was overly complicated. And the way it all resolved and came together was silly. And it was just not, not worth, like, especially with my current state of, like, brain friedness and lack of focus, um, it was too much. I just didn't, didn't care for it. Next was Dear Girl by Asia Mayrock, and this is a poetry collection, and I'm, I'm normally not a huge fan of poetry, but this one is my other five star. It was so good. It's only, like, 125 pages, and it's poetry, so it'll take you no time at all to read, and it's just about empowering girls and as a mom of two girls and as a woman myself I just love 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 it and just the name dear girl um it's like just so much I want to have a physical copy because it's just like oh dear girl you deserve the best and so love that so much Next was Beach Read by Emily Henry, and this one I kind of think the hype got me, as it always does. Um, I gave it three and a half stars. I really enjoyed it, but it wasn't like the best thing ever like I expected it to be. So this one, if you have not heard, is about two writers who go to like lake houses for different reasons. Her, her dad died and um, kind of shook her whole life up because she thought her parents had this perfect marriage and they didn't. And so she writes romance and she's a firm believer in the happily ever after, but then after all of this happens with her dad, she's like, maybe not. And then he is um, kind of a pessimist, maybe a realist. I don't know. And he doesn't believe in happily ever afters. He thinks it's like happy for now at least because life is full of ups and downs and it ends with a down because you die. And so that's his perspective. He writes literary fiction. Both are in a slump, so they decide to switch genres. And they knew each other in college and were like, I think college, maybe high school, but I think college. And um, they were like, they competed with each other. And so there's some bitterness there and some rivalry. And overall, I thought it was really cute, but not mind blowing. So three and a half stars. Um, two more. Love and Catalina Cove by Brenda Jackson. I ended up giving this one three and a half stars. I really enjoyed it. I have seen so many people reading the series lately, and I'm like, why Why are so many people reading this series? And I think it's because the new ones are coming, a, a new one is coming out. And so I just had to pick it up. I gave it three and a half stars. This is about a girl who goes back to her hometown again, and when she's there, like, she's very reluctant. She does not want to go back because there has been a lot of stuff that happened when she was a teenager that... The people weren't good to her. The place was not good to her, whatever. So she goes, and as she's going into town, she gets pulled over for going five miles over the speed limit by this guy named Sawyer. And so Sawyer and she strike up a relationship, and it's their story. And um, I loved, like, Catalina Cove. I'm really excited to finish with the series. I think the next one is about her friend, and I was so curious about that. So I can't wait to read the next one. My library has one and three. And I think four is about to come out, but so I'm going to request that they um, purchase number two because I really am intrigued to go on. And then last was Calm the Heck Down by Melanie Dale. Um, it's how to calm the heck down, how to lighten up, how to let go and lighten up about parenting by Melanie Dale. And I have not read anything by Melanie Dale, but um, a couple of her other like nonfictions have been on my TBR. And I gave this one four stars and it's just funny. Like she is a lot different than me. She's, um, she is like a self-proclaimed yeller and the way things function in their family is a little bit different than mine. But I laughed out loud multiple times and she has three kids. Um, one was IVF and then he was a preemie. So like her, her, um, birth process and like pregnancy and all of that was really, really rough. And so then her other two are adopted and she adopted them like out of birth order. So she had her son, then adopted an older girl and then a younger girl. So, um, she's just kind of does things a little atypically and it's funny and entertaining. And I highly enjoyed my reading experience of that. So, that is my August wrap up. Thank you guys for listening. It's been, kind of been long winded. I'm really hoping September is a better month. Um, 
the whole month of August, I was doing the Summer Fling Reading Challenge, and I did all of them except for Road Trip, I think. And so now, um, September, October, and November, Tia from all the, Tia and all the books, Rainy from Rainy Day Reads, um, there's a whole bunch of them that are host Cozy Reader Kelly and Literary Labors. I think those are the four. Um, they are doing a three-month readathon of Fall Into Reading. And so um, I don't know how I feel about these long-range uh readathons like I feel like I need to win them <laughs> and so like I feel like I need to like binge really quick but it was kind of nice to just like see where things fall and then fill in where necessary and so that's my plan going forward but that's neither here nor there so thank you again for watching I will talk to you in the next one thanks again bye